In this example, we're going to be talking about uh, our first derivative test, which is going to help us to figure out some local maximums, local minimums, and whether we have uh, no max or min, but it is a potential extrema. So here's what we got going on. What we're looking for is things that we're looking for when the slope is zero. So when the slope is zero, we're either going to have a potential maximum, minimum, or we're going to have something that I call a chair. Um, so how are we going to differentiate between these three? Um, and that's going to be, we're going to have a local maximum if your slopes change from positives to negative. You have positive slope on this side, negative slope on this side. So positive slope transitioning to negative slope means we have that kind of a look with a slope of zero somewhere in between. right? And so we have a slope of zero at that point, positive slopes on the left, positive negative slopes on the right, means that we have to have an ex, uh, maximum. And so for a minimum, we're going to have go from a negative slope to a positive slope, so negative to a positive. So visually, I draw something like that, and we're going to have um, a minimum. And then how do we know when a chair is going to happen is let's say we have a positive slope to a positive slope, but we do hit a slope of zero. So it does have to level off at A, and then it continues up. So that's not a maximum or a minimum, but it is a slope of zero. And it would be true if you have a negative where it levels off and then you have a negative. Um, so we don't know just because you have a slope of zero doesn't mean you have a max doesn't mean you have a min and it doesn't, we don't know right so we have to do a little more digging and kind of test the regions in between so with that let's find some stuff so we have uh, we have this function uh, x to the fourth we're going to find the values in which the f of x is increasing um, and then where it's uh, decreasing and we're going to use that information to tell whether they're maxes or mins right so Let's do the math. So first thing is we're going to do the derivative of this because the derivative is uh, finding everything about the slope. So our derivative of this is going to be uh, 12x to the third minus 12x squared minus 6 nope, minus 12x plus 12. All right, so next thing is we're going to take that equation, that cubic, and we are going to set it equal to zero. So here it is, set equal to zero, and we're going to try to solve it. So first thing I see is I can take a 12 out of every single piece. So if I take a 12 out of every single piece, I'm going to get an x cubed minus x squared minus x plus one, and then that's going to equal zero. Um, we're going to try to factor this. Technically, we could divide the 12 over to get rid of it. Um, so really, we're just looking at when this piece right here, x cubed minus x squared minus x plus one, when it equals zero. So we're going to factor it. And just kind of looking at it, something that I'm trying to see if I can factor it, uh, especially like a factor by grouping or a box kind of a thing, is that these coefficients seem to be kind of multiples of these coefficients, or these coefficients seem to be multiples of these coefficients. They're similar, so I believe this thing is going to be factorable. So I'm going to build a box to factor it. And to build that, I'm going to put all four of these terms in these four spots. So I'm just going to go straight across, negative x squared, negative x, and a 1. Right, so I'm going to look at what's the greatest common factor between these, which is an x squared. What's the greatest common factor between these two is a 1, but I'm going to keep the sign of that outside piece. What's the greatest common factor of this, of the column? That's x. Greatest common factor of this column is a 1, but I'm going to keep the negative on that. So here's how I know that that worked. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. Negative 1, x, negative x, negative 1, negative 1 is positive 1. So those are our factors. So let's keep going with this. Is Our factors are x squared minus 1 and x minus 1. And then this factors further. x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1. So our critical points are going to be at negative 1, 1, and one. 
So we have a repeat going on with that. All right, so let's take that. And let's look at our slopes. So our factors were x plus one, x minus one, x minus one. Okay, so our critical numbers were negative one and positive one. Perfect. Negative one, positive one. Now I'm going to test the slopes on either side. Figure out where I'm increasing and decreasing, which then I can figure out whether I have maxes or mins or a chair. So if I plug in a value to the left, so that'd be like a negative two, I'm going to get a negative times a negative times a negative. So that all multiplies to a negative. And then if I have take a look at this, I'm going to have, uh, or I plug in a value between negative one and one, like a zero, I'm going to get a positive, negative, negative, making a positive slope. And then beyond one, I'm going to get like a two is going to be a positive, positive, positive. So all of these slopes are going to be positive as well. All right, so let's put it all together. We have a negative slope transitioning to a positive slope. So that means we have this kind of a look going on with a slope of zero at negative one. So we got a minimum happening and then a positive slope transitioning to a positive slope. But we have to level off because we have a slope of zero. So we had a chair going on there. So visually, I have some sort of a minimum happening and it levels off and then it goes up again. So here's my minimum. Here's my slope that's zero. It's leveling off. Um, so we're trying to figure out, let's go back and answer the questions. Where is the graph increasing and where is it decreasing? So it is increasing. Um, at these two sections, but don't include the one. So negative infinity, nope. it is from negative one to positive one. So negative one to positive one, and don't include the endpoints because those are slopes of zero, and then from one to infinity. Where is it decreasing? It's decreasing at this first section from negative infinity to negative one. And then the last bit is we have identify your local extrema. We have probably an absolute, but we'll call it a relative max. Um, or sorry, relative min at x equals negative one. All right, so it's probably absolute, but we're not digging in a little deeper for that. Probably absolute min. All right, so that was figuring out when the graph was increasing, figure out when the graph is decreasing, and figure out if you have any kind of extrema um, by using the derivative and analyzing the slopes around those derivatives.